Can I talk about um, Dame Dash coming for me over coming over the weekend you? and stuff? No. <laughs> Man, that, he's sitting at home saying, pause. Um, yeah, he just paused the fuck out of there. No, I don't know. I know exactly what triggered him or what made him upset. It was that basically like Vlad, every time I go on Vlad, Vlad does yeah. not really care for Dame Dash. So Vlad will bring up Dame Dash over and over and like basically mm -hmm. try to get me to talk about him. I don't really have that much to say about Dame and stuff. So I was having the conversation, but I don't know. Dame, Dame basically got mad. Posted the clip on his Instagram. It's down now for whatever reason. But, I mean, I don't know exactly what he was so... The, the main thing that it seemed like he was mad about is the fact that I made a comment about him when he was on this uh, this this family therapy show. Mm -hmm. How and long I, ago was this? This was a couple months ago, maybe. Yeah. And I just basically said that that clip was fucking crazy and fucked up and sort of disturbing. And I don't know if you guys seen it. It is fucking weird, dude. Because he's, he's arguing with his kids, and his kids are, like, grown or, like, almost grown. They're in their, like, late teens or early mm -hmm. 20s or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And he's calling them dumb. And, like, just the way he's arguing with them is fucking crazy. And I feel like almost anybody who see this clip, I mean, that was the reaction from the internet when they saw this clip, was that this clip is fucking crazy. It's not like I said anything particularly out of the ordinary there. But Dame's reaction was basically to say, oh, that show was a setup, and they, you know, it wasn't a respectable show, whatever. Okay, cool. I, all I did was see this piece of content that was out there on the internet. If you think that my analysis of it, if your only way of arguing back against that is to say, that the show was fucked up, it's like, okay, maybe the show was fucked up. I'm just saying that what I saw in terms of, and I don't know how fucked up the show could possibly be to make Dame seem different in that situation in terms of how he was dealing with his kids or talking to his kids. It mm -hmm. just doesn't, I don't understand how the they could have manipulated that footage to have made it something that it wasn't because yeah. to me it just seemed fucking crazy. But anyway, that, that I think that's the only thing that he could have been mad about. And, uh, yeah, he got angry what? as fuck, and he went on a crazy, or think, not a crazy, but he, he went so. wild out on me. It seemed more like he was, like, just mad that you guys were talking about him just in general. Like, you know, you guys were bringing him up He probably doesn't like Vlad very much. I don't think he likes yeah. Vlad, yeah. no. I mean, I would agree, but this is the thing, is that Vlad was talking all about how he doesn't think Dame Dash respects anybody and how Dame... Yeah. Like, Vlad... Vlad kind of leaned into it. Vlad sure. even hit me... Well, Vlad brought him up in the first place. Yeah. I wouldn't have been talking about Dame Dash otherwise because I did those three episodes of the show, decided that I didn't think that the conversation was going anywhere, mm -hmm. and then that was it. You and feel like he was just getting into your... Like, he was just, like, relentless on you and, like, just wouldn't let up? My attitude about dame was and what really kind of soured me on the whole thing was when we had that conversation where he asked me five million times like how do you know what black people want and that that was his only reaction in this was to repost that clip and yeah. try to call attention to that clip and this is the actual problem and this is why i stopped doing the podcast with dame in a more literal sense is because i was trying to have a nuanced conversation with dame I never was saying what black people want. I wasn't trying to be a person deciding what black people want. He yeah. was able to take a tiny little piece of what I was actually saying because what I was actually saying in context was I was saying that I thought that the reaction that I was seeing to Kanye's most recent album was that people wanted to see him, his fans wanted to see him address a lot of the things that had been going on publicly and a lot of that stuff was him publicly supporting Donald Trump. Yeah, but and you fucked up by wording it. You literally you, worded you it. Word it, <laughs> it is what it is, but nine, you know? 99 out of 100 people that you would have that conversation with would no, course, not do Dame what Dame Dash did, <laughs> where he fucking took yeah, he that one go. little piece of the conversation yeah. where I was saying something that was so innocuous and really not controversial at all, and I still will sit here and say that Dame, Kanye's fan base wanted to hear him address a lot of that Trump stuff or wants that Trump stuff to make sense. But that, for me, like, as a Kanye fan... I'm like, I have a hard time listening to Kanye and taking him seriously when I know that he supports Donald Trump in the way that he does. And if he wants me to take him seriously as a public thinker, he has to make his support of Donald Trump at least sort of make what? sense to me. And that's what I was saying. But Dame, Dame did the thing that Dame does that prohibits Dame from having a real conversation with anybody yeah. is that he treats Good conversation point. like fucking warfare. And he will take something that I said in that situation where I obviously was not saying that I know what black people fucking want or whatever. I was saying that I thought that Kanye needed to answer for his support of Donald Trump. And he will but take I think that was his whole twist point. the whole thing. No, his whole point his that whole was manipulating 
translating what you're saying into something that you weren't saying but and then also, arguing with you about look, something that you never said. Also, you you were like deflecting the fact when he was trying to say that like, okay, it don't matter. Like Kanye doesn't care what the people wants. He is like an artist and he's going to do what the artist wants to do. And he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't feel like he needs to explain himself. And he said that a couple, he, Dame said that a couple of times. But too. does anyone actually believe that Kanye doesn't care about not the public response care. to what he does? Because he doesn't care, but it's like, I, I do believe that Kanye is doing what is in his heart to some extent. Mm -hmm. But I also think Kanye clearly cares about the results. I mean, this is somebody who's more concerned about money and fame and numbers, et cetera, than but like anybody. Dame said, like Dame said, he's he stole what he still sold like three hundred thousand or something the first week. His album still did good, and he like he like culturally listen did any, some different shit. Any Kanye West album is going to come out and do a numbers. couple hundred thousand yeah, sure. uh, equivalents of sales in its first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no doubt that that's always going to happen, at least for the mm. foreseeable future, for say, Kanye so, West. Yeah. Okay. He could put out, literally, he could put out an eight-song EP of, of him, him farting, <laughs> and it would and do 100,000 plus streams at of least. him farting, because that's how many people listen to Kanye and want to yeah. hear what Kanye has to say. We need to talk about that album right now. Has, did that album make a big cultural impact? I wouldn't say that it made a cultural impact, but like... I would say the cultural impact is the lack of impact, is the fact that this was the first Kanye album in which there was no everything. serious impact. We but all talk you, about the Sunday the Sunday service. Cool. That, that kind of all... Yeah, but I say that all encompasses with, within each other is the fact that like he fucking had people at Coachella going to church on Sunday morning that usually would probably not get up Right. Until fucking 4 p.m. and go watch Travis Scott, you know. But has that? Like, but but is has there like been a cultural mom, ramification like outside mom? of the actual act of him doing that? Do you see a whole lot of people getting way more into Christianity within hip hop because of that? Bro, my I don't mom, think so. my mom, who is an older Christian black woman who does not listen to rap music at all. It was like so blown away that Kanye is doing this like fucking church service and that's really good. And like she was like, I want to. Li she listened to his album now because she like she knew like what he was about. I we haven't talked about it that deep, but we just talked about this the other day randomly, and I was like, oh, like. And you know what? I would agree that that album probably has made a massive impact or has sent shockwaves you know? through the gospel community, through the church or just, community, or just through people that <laughs> no normally like. You just drop your phone yeah. every five seconds and crack it. Or, or um. <laughs> It was like sitting in my lap, <laughs> or like not even that. It like th that. It just it got more people into it. Like broadened his horizon onto more people that probably would have not been into his music as much. Right. Okay. But fair enough. Enough about the Kanye album because I did have that conversation. That wasn't the part that was controversial. Dame decided to get controversial because he wanted to talk about that part of me and Vlad talking. You slipped and up though and said that though. Yeah, you said, but you, you said guys, the words. I don't understand you how you guys words. don't get this though because that, if you actually what, watch what, you, what I actually I said get, it's not, the whole thing. It's not hard to figure out what's going on in that conversation. Yeah, what he you, did he definitely did a great it. job at painting it as if I was saying something that I was obviously not saying but it's not like you need to be like a really advanced podcast watcher to tell what Dame is doing in that moment. It's no, so it. fucking obvious that he's just taking this moment <laughs> and using it to create this narrative that just was not there and would not have been there if he didn't do this and that's the whole thing that Dame always does and that's why from my perspective say it though, but but you're you're feeding into this notion that I'm what he, that that what I did was self that. evidently what I was doing there. What and he made what it into, doing, but and that's but, the whole thing is that for you, you're having a hard time even like remembering that I conversation outside of the fact that he took one thing that I said out of context and then repeated it 500 fucking times to the point. I mean, nobody still can say that I actually was saying that I know what black people want. I was talking about what Kanye West fan base wants him to explain about his support of our very, very racist president. It seems like a pretty modest thing to expect Kanye to comment upon from my perspective. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't feel like I said anything even slightly fucking edgy in that moment. And I didn't for say you said it the edgy, fact but... that Dame is still doubling down on it. And I also saw that Waka Flocka commented and said, I agree with Adam in this situation, mm. which I don't know exactly what he was referring to. Shout but... out Waka Flocka, though. Did you ever watch that episode of Everyday Struggle with him? I still have. I was telling I you, did, no. you guys I suck. Dude, this is literally the most best, like, Financial literacy, okay, like it. it was fucking beautiful. To watch Waka Flocka go from hard in the paint to the way he was speaking up there, it was fucking beautiful. Yeah, it I really inspired like, uh, me, honestly. He's been on this journey for a while. I though. know, but it was like it all cultivated into this one moment of me hearing him, and he sounded so intelligent and such like a changed man and such like like he sounded like Hotep, Hotep Flocka Flame. 
Like, it, what, what does that mean? I don't know. Hotep means like woke, I guess. Does it? I've heard a couple like people that. said that and been like, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know, dude, but it was fucking... <laughs> you just said it know, and now you're admitting you don't know what it means. I don't know what it actually means, but I know that Waka Flocka was woke Is as fuck. Yes, exactly. If that just means... I hope it doesn't mean woke. Because then you're going to... No, it's just like, it's just like you're like, you know, like... No, but the Royce album, he said it a million times. And I still didn't really pick Maybe up on one of them. Maybe it means like you're enlightened. Honestly, I yeah. think I did Google it, I'm and now I'm forgetting. Right now. Yeah, Google, Google yeah. it. Google right now. Like okay. my Googler right here. Keep keep the combo going. I'll no, but Google. um, so yeah. How how is this your Exit response this to Dame? This is my response to this like non-existent thing that Dame has tried to paint me as having said that I didn't actually say. Yeah, and that's why I don't really even like feel the need to engage in this argument all that much. It just doesn't seem like I'm not really interested in having a <laughs> conversation. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> the first meme comes up. Dude. Wait, what's uh, the first Hotep is, a, is an Egyptian word that roughly translates to to be at peace. The word also refers to an offering ritually presented to what? To, we need to know like its current like I don't know, use. Dude. What is Hotep? A very smart brother explains. Exactly. Wait, well, let's go to the Urban Dictionary definition. Mm. It is a com a common ver greeting with people well versed in true world history. My it brother. means peace or I come in peace. My brother. Hotep. My brother. It does basically mean you work, know? I guess, yeah. And like, you know, you, like you wearing your kufi with your natural dreads. I'm going to have to hear a lot more people say this in context for me to actually like figure out how it's supposed to be used, I think. Waka Flock is woke. That's all you need to know. Okay, I support that. Anyway. Wait. Oh, okay. And, and Are you Adam 22 doesn't no, no, care okay. about I, black I, I, I just watched <laughs> what he said. I do. I just want to say this is that. The reason why I stopped doing the podcast with Dame is because I'm not really interested in having conversations with people who don't want to have like an honest conversation about ideas. And with Dame, it was just became so obvious in that moment that like, oh, he would way rather use this, this moment to sort of twist our conversation into something that's going to like let him win. And it's like, I get that impulse because I am a very argumentative person too. And I've identified it in myself where you're having an argument with somebody and you don't really want to keep arguing with them. And you feel like they might have a point and you basically just take one thing that they say and you just, just sort of twist it, it yeah. and you manipulate it until it just seems like it's actually making a point. And that's not how you win an argument. And, uh, I don't really like, the, like the, the greater conversation that me and Vlad were having there was basically that, if you introduce people into your life because mm -hmm. of doing content, whether it's doing interviews, whatever, if you interest or inter introduce toxic people into your life, eventually you'll have to deal with that. And he was using Benzino as an example, saying that he did a whole bunch of Benzino uh, interviews mm -hmm. where Benzino was talking shit about Eminem, blah, blah, blah. And then Benzino wanted to do another one talking a bunch of shit about Eminem. And Vlad was like, mm. nah, you know, I I'm good. I don't want to do I don't it about that topic. That. And yeah. then Benzino aired Vlad out, called him a white supremacist, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> And what the fuck happened in this interview is that basically I stopped doing a podcast with Dame Dash. We had a small sliver of a conversation about it and Dame flipped the script and decided I'm a white supremacist all of a sudden. And the real reason I don't give a shit and that I haven't really been bothered by it is because of the fact that he was always saying this shit. He was always calling me racist on the podcast, and it, n I never took it serious then. Yeah. So why would I start taking it serious now? It's what was he saying when we were there? Like something about um, you don't know politics, so don't speak. And then he yeah. has the other lady. Oh no no no! It was. He was on your ass. No, boy. when uh, you don't know what you're talking about, so stop talking. No, he says stuff like that in conversation. Like th this is all coming down to Dame basically denying that he is a rude, inconsiderate person. Dame, that is the most self-evidently obvious thing ever about him is that you can't have a conversation with him. He's a total jerk to everybody that he's ever met. When you meet him, you maybe get like a small buffer in which he's kind of nice to you. And uh, he basically like surrounds himself with people that won't say no to him and that will just basically be along for the ride of him just sort of wiling out. And it's so obvious, like anybody who goes to his space that he's pretty much just surrounding himself with people who are gonna actually just agree with everything he says and whatever he wants to do. But you'll notice that like, who does Dame actually have relationships with in the industry? Like he doesn't do content with anybody. He doesn't like, you know, and it's, it's like, I wanted to do content with Dame so bad, but he's such a prick that it's just, you can't really. Vlad called it. Vlad was right. Was Vlad, right. Vlad is 100% right about Dame Dash. I can say that for sure, yeah. 
You think anyway, you, you think you just couldn't take it, and he was just getting in your ass too much. But who can take it? That's the question. Is who I felt, unco- who ha- I felt uncomfortable. Who has in that Dame room. had relationships? Who has Dame tried mm-hmm. to make a show with that it worked out? Nobody. And I this guess. is Dame Dash. She knows every fucking person in the music industry. Who did? Who you know? It's like he could do a Maybe show he's with anyone. Too truthful for the world. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't really. No, agree he's with that. doing a show with uh, Dave and Sebastian. Is he? I did see on that. Instagram Live, he said to me. I did see that. Actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yolo, there you go. I'm with it. Is it on Quibi? Can we? Oh, Quibi? y'all got a Quibi deal? Mm. What the fuck is Quibi? I, I want to be surprised. That. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's like this new startup, weird. like a video thing, and it's all like, it's like movies Zoom. and TV shows, but it's, everything's ten minutes or less. And it's like an app, and you got to pay like five bucks a month, I think. And it's like they did so much content for it and according to everybody who's been on it it's stupid as fuck i have not been on it personally but mm. oh, so it's like it's like tiktok but 10 minutes <laughs> i guess so could, yeah. it's like a short tv it's like it, you said it could be a tv show like or whatever form. yeah it's or just movie, you know, but it's 10 minutes they long. created the stupid fucking platform of all this stuff and i've, I've heard it's pretty dreadful diss us being like oh you probably have quibi deals it's just, I need a Quibi deal. Quibi, get at me, bro. No, you, the the joke there is just that it seems like Quibi <laughs> is doing like a deal to create some content with like fucking everyone under oh, the sun. Cool. Chrissy get, Teigen has a show. I don't know what the fuck let's she's get some doing. Quibi deals in. I'm let's down go. to well, do a Quibi thing. Some of the people who have Quibi deals are fu- it's fucking huge, like Chrissy Teigen and stuff. Yeah. Um, some of it is maybe like being a mom. I feel like. Chrissy Teigen her, versus the world. I see Chrissy Teigen doing a Live lot of Quibi. cute mom stuff, mom stuff. On, uh, on Twitter. Seems like she would be a pretty good mom to be quarantined with. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this clip from the No Jumper show. If you want, tune in next Tuesday. We usually do them at about 6 p.m., but check our social media if you want to make sure. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to know your thoughts down below.